folks. By this point, if you've watched part one and two, you went over hive components and hive feeders. Well, right now I'd like to talk about protective clothing for the beekeeper. There are several options available. From just a simple veil to protect your face, to a full suit, which here is here behind me. So a lot of that's going to depend on how comfortable you are with your bees or around bees. One thing you want to practice when you're working with the honeybees is not to use fast motions around the hive. Try to move in a, in a slow manner and, uh, and not have any jerking motions. That might draw their attention to you. Now if you can practice to move slow and be calm, most likely you won't have any problems out of your bees and, and you'll need minimum protection. I'm trying to think back now to when I got my first bees and, and I didn't really know anything about honeybees when I first got into beekeeping. Um, a swarm actually was in a tree of mine here in the yard and uh, at, previous to that um, I'd been talking about interest in beekeeping. Um, so when that swarm landed here I took that as a sign to begin beekeeping and, and I had no equipment, no protective clothing. And uh, I can remember being out here in a couple sweaters and uh, didn't really have much for the, to cover my face, but uh, I didn't really know what I was doing. So uh, I would have liked to have a video like this to uh, inform me. Let's get started here a little bit now. Thinking back when I first got that hive and, and wearing them sweaters, not much longer after that point, uh, a fellow beekeeper donated a suit to me and that was this full suit here. Now this covers you from head to toe. It's not the cleanest but that's just because it's been well used. Either way it zips up all the way in the front and then it has this veil which zips around the collar closing in your face completely. And you could even buy one of these hard hats with the ventilation that you'll see in these beekeeping supply catalogs or online. Or you can just use a simple ball cap. I think the ball cap works good. The one thing you got to look for is that you don't pull the elastic and the veil down too far in the back, leaving that hole, leaving that hole in the back of your hat open for a bee to get in. So you want to always make sure that if you wear a ball cap, keep the back of the elastic up above that hole. So that's the full bee suit. Now this gets relatively warm in the, in the summertime. When it's 90 degrees, this is the last thing I want to put on. I'll be honest with you there. But it is great for protection of the body, arms, and legs. And the face with the veil. Now I imagine that's how a lot of you will start out if you're not real comfortable around honeybees. But uh, if you feel a little bit more comfortable around them and you're not so much worried about your legs, I would highly recommend this ventilated jacket. Now it's ventilated fully, but it has three, three layers of protection that the bees are now able to reach their stinger through to make contact with your skin, but yet air can flow right through it and keep you cool on them summer days. Really like the jacket. And I don't get anything for it, but I'm going to go ahead and give them a plug. I gave, got this from Man Lake, and I have another video on this jacket. It's kind of a review if you would like to see that, to understand the jacket a little bit more. Protecting your hands. You can go to your local TSC, Tractor Supply Company, and I think they're just cowhide gloves. And these will protect your hands. The one thing they will not protect with the jacket or the full suit is if your sleeves pull up leaving this open area the bees will find it and you do not want bees in your gloves I've been down that road before and it is no fun so these gloves will work and what I see a lot of beekeepers do is they'll pull their sleeves down and they'll duct tape this area well that's all fine if you want to do that every time you work your bees there's another option and that's these 
and I believe these are goat skin. This has a piece of canvas sewn right onto the glove, as you can see, and it extends all the way up my arm. You can see I can get it all the way up past my elbow and my sleeve going down inside of it. So I've got double protection here, and this helps great with working in the hide and not getting stung. But you're going to see several several of these different styles of these. Some of them have ventilation right here, kind of like the same material that's in the jacket so that your arms so that your arms can breathe. Um, I also see beekeepers wearing uh, just regular latex gloves like a medical glove and that is not going to protect your hand from stings. It's just going to keep the propolis and uh, the stickiness of the honey off your hands. Um, as far as the stinger, the stinger will go right through that. Once you get into keeping your bees for a while and, and get adjusted to them and, and learn their temperament, you might be able just to go down to a veil. Now I've had hives, and I have a couple hives still at this time, that on a, on a nice sunny day, I can go out there in my t-shirt and my shorts, throw on my veil, puff them some smoke, and I can go in there and work them bees with no protection on my arms or legs and I have no issues. Now, I have other hives that I wouldn't dare attempt that. So, it, it all just depends on the temperament of the hive. So it's going to take the beekeeper to to learn his bees, his or her bees and understand that. So that gives you a rough idea on how much it will cost you depending on what kind of protection you want to work your bees. I hope this helped, and now we'll move on to the next video. Smokers and Hive Tolls. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.